don't miss out on part two if you haven't seen it yet. All right, we're sliding smoothly here along Godzilla's back, although there's a bunch of spiny plates on it. But now let's get into the abilities and strength of our friend, our big, mighty, not so gentle giant. We will be focusing more on the common Godzilla conceptions, Shin Godzilla aside. All right, here we go. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Intense bite power, clawing, and the use of arms, only limited by their size, which within their size to body ratio are sort of small. We have tail slamming, lower body power, and heftiness, which creates for great balance and stability, which might I add, adds to the scientific realism of the creature, considering its size. So compacted mass, strength, able to lift its own weight and more, and to fantastically move its huge tail without proper momentum, which brings into the idea of the second brain within the higher part of its waist, which can possibly allow for more advanced tail awareness and function. So another Godzilla benefit, two brains, being able to remain underwater for extreme lengths of time, destructive steam emitting ability, and the exhaust is powerful enough to propel Godzilla backward in the air. Another one of those things worth ignoring. And again, this powerful steamy attack later becomes more like a plasma beam and even an atomic ray. And in more advanced forms, it can even hit objects at a distance outside of our atmosphere. Another strength, extreme regeneration. Also, the absorption and use of electricity such as for empowering an attack or bringing itself back to life. A powerful and durable hide, able to withstand the destructive power of tectonic plates, magma, and even direct meteorite impacts. Wow. Not to mention the power-ups. Super Saiyan Godzilla, anyone? Hey, it's all within Japanese media. So, absorption and use of electricity. The electricity benefiting factor arrived later in the Godzilla timeline, actually. As it, in later movies, grew in power, which Shin Godzilla clearly expressed again, electricity actually used to be one of its main weaknesses. Ability to sense other extreme threats from great distances, Hmm. Magnetism draws metals toward himself. We see this being used when he pulls in Mech Godzilla. And then we have some more from here and there. Precognition, fireballs, again utilizing electricity, electric bite, super speed at times, eye beams. And I have to underline powerful drive, longevity, what keeps Godzilla going and going and going. An unstoppable, unstoppable force. If only Serizawa wouldn't have killed himself. If only. And now the polar opposite, weaknesses. And well, it used to be electricity, but we've seen that change over time. Slow due to size and atmospheric restrictions, although still fast to us considering how small we are. And what I mentioned in the strengths, but here the small arms, as comparatively they are pretty small, as well as the head and the mouth compared to the body, and comparing to other daikaijus of similar mass and size. Clumsy, although is that really a weakness? or more so kind of a sub-weakness. Low intelligence, which again is very, very arguable, and that's a lot more so in the earlier depictions, but which also sort of returns in the newer depictions of Godzilla as being more beastly and animal-like in nature. In Return of Godzilla, it showed vulnerability to the highly toxic metal cadmium, and there were also other vulnerabilities and weaknesses that it presented, but to many it actually adapted against. So therefore, on um, kind of a side weakness, I would have to say that one of its greatest weaknesses is how the movie studios want to portray Godzilla as clearly a king of monsters and therefore continue to evolve him in movies as being more and more powerful, in turn taking away parts of its character while satisfying those that want it to be the answer to being the ultimate beastie. Hence, obviously, in the movie's history, he has to become friendlier with humanity because otherwise that growing power would simply destroy us. So there's quite a difference among the various Godzilla depictions. And so I ask you, which one is your favorite? What is your favorite representation of Gojira?
The more simplified and limited antagonistic early versions, or the playful protector of humanity mid versions, or the later beastly powerhouse nearly invulnerable versions. And so you've made it, dear traveler. You've made it to one of my favorite parts, as you know. The power level. One being a beetle. Five, a good size hefty troll. And you know I mean the monster. And ten, an all-ruling entity. Being of ages. I have to give Godzilla a great big epic 7.5. And yes, you may be surprised that I said 7.5. Well, look, my range is pretty, pretty big here from the 1 to 10 power levels. And I'd say a 7 Godzilla being of titanic size means it's huge upon a mountain. You would see it from quite a distance. But an 8, a creature, a beastie, a monster with a level 8 power level here, would be able to move those mountains. So yes, my range goes pretty big. And if you're curious, what's gonna be a 10? What a nine? Well, stick with us. But Godzilla is truly a behemoth of a monster that we, the monsterites, are proud to analyze here at World of Monsters. And so my overall appreciation of Godzilla, Gojira, the concept, that creature, everything about it. I have to give props to Toho Studio for creating and copying another movie and creating what has become such a memorable, classic, powerful, great monster and for creating such a movie success within our cultures. I'm personally a fan of the black and reptilian look, the gray to white sharp jagged plates on the back, and I used to have an awesome Godzilla toy that would spout that hot steam out. Man, where is that thing? I gotta get another one. As far as movie appearance, art, and realism, the lower body thickness to me often still comes out as kind of looking goofy, but did in fact make for a much easier costume to maneuver. The new 2014 version did sort of complete the look by giving it much more realism, the smaller eyes, better anatomical proportions, and a head and face slightly reminiscent of an alligator snapping turtle, which is the perfect conceptual inspiration here. Of course, without the but with fang-lined jaws. Also, the bumps were later replaced with clearly what is visible as scales. And another important note to bring rise to is the face was given a bit more of a dog-like feel to maybe making it more recognizable and relatable as a sort of friendly creature, not just all downright evil. And I also heard that it was modeled after noble eagle features. Godzilla has been extremely influential in our culture, a huge accomplishment. An actual dinosaur was named after the monster, Gojirasaurus Kwai. And that's not Kawaii, even though the dinosaur is a lot smaller than the Gojira concept. The monster has also earned a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Patrick Stewart himself presented Godzilla with an MTV Lifetime Achievement Award in 1996. In April 2015, Gojira was named as an official cultural ambassador and has earned citizenship from Tokyo's Shinjuku Ward. There's even a Godzilla-themed hotel, Hotel Graceri Shinjuku. And if you haven't heard this one, it's bound to at least get a funny smile out of you. Kim Jong-il actually kidnapped a well-respected director and forced him to make North Korea's own version of Godzilla, known as Pulgasari. Godzilla and all the surrounding movies provided us with an interesting culture and overall worldly presentation going on for over 60 years now, starting with a dark first horror to light-hearted additions to realistic presentations focusing more on the realism, science, and devastating implications of such creature. If we hit World War III, and deities and gods forbid, but if we do, could you imagine the post-movies that would later come out, the Godzilla movies, and the themes within those movies, how treacherous, devastating, just freaky and scary those would be? 
Gojira has represented a reflection of our world, our globalization, the United States and Japanese relationships. And finally to the last segment within our All About series, where I will explore the various other similar beasts as similar as possible to Gojira. And it's always fun to see you guys come up with ones that I haven't mentioned in the video. So we have to start with, we have to start with The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, the original film that actually inspired Gojira. Huge inspiration, although other than being a reptilian creature, it's not all that similar to Gojira. The cross idea between a Stegosaurus and a T-Rex, Indominus Rex, the fictitious dinosaur from Jurassic World, and by proportion much, much smaller, the following dinosaurs, mostly theropods. Spinosaurus, Iguanodon, especially the old depictions, actually the older depictions of all of these dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Megalosaurus, Scorpio Venator, wait is that actually a real dinosaur name? Skeletor, go look that one up, been doing nothing for decades, you're starting to gain some weight. Allosaurus, an Allosaurus from the movie The Beast of Hollow Mountain, 1956, Albertosaurus, Caretosaurus or Ceretosaurus, and several other dinosaurs. And continuing into other lores, we have the Vastatosaurus Rex from King Kong 2005, Zilla from the movie Godzilla 1998, again if you want to consider that a separate thing, Gorgo, a sea monster 1961, Zarkor, the invader 1996, Kra, or Kra, the sea monster, 1998, and Lizzie within the Rampage game. As just mentioned before, North Korea's Polgasari, D&D's Tarask, at least some depictions of it. There are also many kaijus of similar size, but I will only pick out the really similar designs, or I'll try to, such as Varan or Varan, Gabera, although it's tailless, Gorosaurus, Space Godzilla, although they didn't really have to use the same name within the title of the creature, Raiju or Reiju, the Mecha Godzillas, and of course the upgraded Kiryu. And then there's Destroya, Gigan, Gigan X, Bagan or Bagon or Bagan, Baragon, Titanosaurus. All right, now we're starting to stray a little bit far from the Godzilla form. Dragon Sword, the Power Rangers. Who would win in a fight? The Power Rangers and their mech thing versus Godzilla. What do you guys think? It's amazing there's never actually been a crossover of these two worlds considering they were both created in Japan. What's the meaning of this? Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of an amazing monster. Let me know what all about movie monster you would like to see next. And if you're curious, check out our all the versions. Check out all the variations of Godzilla throughout the years, throughout the movies. Also got the video about explaining what kaiju is and daikaiju. Let's see what you guys think about that and many other videos related to Godzilla and all of monsters. Oh. And as you know, I'm also on Facebook where we got an active group and you'll see a whole lot of updates there. Thank you for watching all about Godzilla. 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 Godzilla.